All right, joining me from uh, down in Phoenix, she's getting ready for the, uh, the session to begin here after the new year. Uh, she represents Legislative District 7, large, sprawling district. Uh, Senator Wendy Rogers. Senator, how are you doing today? Great to be with you, Jeff. Uh, yeah. yeah, I'm at my office uh, in the Senate. We just had a budget meeting among us, Republican senators. Uh, a lot going on. Well, let's start with the budget then, Senator. I mean, I, I have heard that we finally reached that state in Arizona where the the budget's grown a lot over the past decade. We can, we can all look at the numbers and see that. Uh, but I've been hearing rumblings that we may be facing a deficit or the budget, let's say, is going to have to shrink coming up. What are you hearing? What do you see in budget-wise? That's absolutely correct. And as some of you listeners might recall, each of us Republican senators had 30 million dollars to spend on our uh, respective districts. And so I was able to get a lot of infrastructure projects funded, especially in the poorer uh, parts of the district down in Pinal County. I also uh, got $10 million for Flagstaff flood mitigation due to the wildfires and have learned uh, to work closely with the Flagstaff City Council. By the way, Becky Daggett uh, Lori Matthews, and in particular, Miranda Sweet, who I do support for re-election, uh, have been very uh, good to work with. And uh, I've gotten to know them, uh, those three in particular, really well. And I'm proud to work alongside them to get some of these, if you will, nonpartisan, transcendent kinds of things accomplished, namely uh, the $10 million. Now you're going to ask me, well, if budget cuts have to be made, uh, what will happen? Well, I was just briefed um, a few hours ago that the uh, model is, is as follows. Uh, we will have uh, roughly $45 million per senator to guard instead of spend, to guard and keep in the budget. And so I have made a commitment uh, with our appropriations people here moments ago that I will guard, I will use my $45 million, if you will, to guard the expenditures that I was able to obtain last year in what I did get to spend for the district. So all those commitments, there's a bridge in Superior, uh, there is uh, infrastructure um, down in Kearney, Hayden, Winkleman area in Pinal County, there is the $10 million for Flagstaff, all of that uh, will be guarded in my uh, 45 million. And the rest of what I have in my 45 million of money to guard for my people, uh, I will likely allocate to roads. And um, uh, I am working on that right now. There is money set aside. I'm just learning this, so you all are hearing this for the first time. There's money set aside in ADOT, Arizona Department of Edge of Transportation, rather. Uh, and of that money that's uh, essentially designated to the four counties that I represent, Coconino, Navajo, Gila, and Pinal, um, I will try to use my guardianship money, as it were, uh, to, to set aside and earmark, if you will, money within that ADOC pot so that when things arise, uh, we can address them. Because I know as much as anyone that we in our a very rural district are subject to the uh, forces of nature on our roads as, as no other counties are. Yeah. And so I want to be able to forestall uh, that inevitability in the upcoming winter season and spring and so forth when repairs have to be made and I want to guard that money for us. Well, and I'm, let me follow up on a few things here and talk with Senator Wendy Rogers. Uh, the forces of nature have absolutely been on work on the roads in Northern Arizona, as you know. Um, it, I think Godzilla got released <laughs> and went on a rampage and just ripped the roads apart, quite honestly. So having the money available, Wendy, for the repairs as they come up, we still haven't even gotten to the point, and you drive it all the time too. You know I-17 heading south, they did a bunch of paving, but still the northbound one is an absolute disaster. Um, we've just, we're in a state of so much backlog. I think I saw a report that came out from ADOT that was showing how many tens of billions of dollars they're projecting they're short over the coming, I don't know, decades or whatever it was just to get things back into repair. Um, is it, is it, do your colleagues recognize how bad the roads are up here? Um, because 
I, I'm not sure they, I'm not sure they do. And I appreciate you guarding the money, but uh, there seems to be a real disconnect there. There is. And a lot of, probably half of the money goes to uh, I-10 between Tucson and Phoenix. And that came up in the meeting and you're right. Unless I squawk loudly and I did Mm -hmm. and I do, and I'm known for that, uh, then this doesn't happen. And, and so it just really harkens back to the fact that rural Arizona needs folks, honestly, like me, uh, and, and I support Steve Slayton, who's running for state house in our district, who comes out of Sholo. These are, we are the kind of voices who speak very vociferously and pointedly because we know we've driven State Route 260 many, many times. Yeah. And as you say, I-17 and, uh, and these other roads. And so, yes, I'm, I'm quite vocal about that. Well, and then if and, I'm, and, go and ahead. Wendy, you're, and you're pointing out the road that they maybe drive on 17. That's a very recognizable and well-traveled road. But you also mentioned uh, White Mountains and 260 and things like that. I mean, besides you and a few of, you know, a lot of our listeners, those are, those are not even noticed at all. They're forgotten about. Well, not on my watch. Sure, sure. Uh, we're going we're gonna to protect that, and I'm going to uh, lead forward on that. And, you know, it's interesting. Some of my colleagues said, well, I used my $30 million last year to do a tax rebate, and so I don't have to guard that money. And the rest of us said, well, good, good for you, but there are those of us who allocated money that we're now going to have to protect which seems like a double-edged sword, but that's okay. You know, I'm, um, I will do that. Well, let me ask you this. We'll talk with Senator Wendy Rogers, because you mentioned guarding these things that you previously allocated. So way roads can get repaired, et cetera, et cetera. But recognizing that there's a budget deficit coming, which less revenue than they projected than would be coming in if everything continued as is how, what's, I guess the question is what's got to give, because something obviously has to give. So if you guard the number, I think you gave was forty-five million. Obviously, per senator. Per senator. Okay, so we're talking a, a chunk of change here. Um, what is the total? For t- two-part question: What is the total projected shortfall that you're working with? When we were looking at, I think eighteen billion dollars last year was the budget. I mean, where do you think we are heading? Well, the one point we have to come up with one point six billion uh, as senators and and state reps. And then there's another 1.6 that's got to be figured out. And so the governor, this is really where we conservatives command the narrative. Instead of playing defense, we are the ones who are fiscal, uh, fiscally responsible. And it, and it will be we who say, uh, this is what we're going to protect. Okay, now what are you Democrats going to protect? And what's the governor going to protect? And oh, by the way, a non-starter is cutting ESAs, uh, empowerment scholarship accounts, the so-called uh, sort of school voucher concept. Uh, that is a non-starter for cuts. And so that is what we have had as an unassailable uh, stop uh, in, the, in the sand, line in the sand. And so that those will not be on the uh, table to be chopped. And, uh, Good. you know, that's, that's that. And if I can segue over into Godzilla and natural forces of nature, um, <laughs> we had <laughs> we had a very good meeting. Two weeks ago, I was home uh, for the week in Flagstaff, and we had ADEQ, Arizona Department of Environmental Quality, up at uh, Wiseman Aviation. Orville Wiseman, Wendy Rogers, Lori Matthews, and Miranda Sweet chaired that uh, meeting with a whole bunch of bureaucrats from all the way from Tucson uh, up through Phoenix. And they all came up to Flagstaff and we essentially told them in two hours time that these controlled burns in the month of October were uh, too, too many. They were overlapping. The air quality was absolutely horrible. And they came back and said, well, we study all this and we look at the topography and we look at the weather and, and all these, uh, decisions go into the ultimate decision to have a controlled burn. And I looked at them and I said, I understand you're doing that to preserve the forest and the out years, but what you're doing is killing us right now. 
You're hurting our livestock. You're hurting human beings at the expense of this long-term goal, which is admirable, but uh, it's not working. And so we were very pointed with them. We said, and again, this is nonpartisan, everyone. This is transcendent. This is Flagstaff. And we said, what are you doing now to learn from this? First of all, my first question out of the gate was, okay, who is the one who signs off on these things? And this lady sort of timidly raised her hand. And I said, what are your qualifications and so forth? And who factors into all this decision making? And how many do you turn down? And how many do you approve? And we, you know, they went through all this stuff. And we just kept having to sort of corral them back to the reality of what you're doing isn't working. It's unhealthy. And what are you going to do to change it? And so they, we had a good understanding. It was two hours of meeting in a hangar. At, at Wiseman Aviation, where, by the way, I as a pilot can tell you, and so can Orville Wiseman, that the controlled burns are so bad that it, it creates instrument flight conditions. This is, you know, Flagstaff Airport, we just had our 75th anniversary, and I was honored to be a part of that uh, that same day, actually. And, it, it, you know, airliners come into Flagstaff. We're, we're a destination location. and obviously have been so, you know, for many, many years. And when the controlled burn situation makes it to where you can't land there or you can only land there with an instrument uh, uh, rating, something's wrong, yeah. okay? And so also livestock and, and respiratory problems. So they walked away with a very uh, terse and pointed a direction and explanation from us that business as usual is not going to be okay from now on and they need to improve their methods. Okay. And Wendy, just to be clear, and I, I just have real quick response because I got to take a quick break, but obviously you want, you want the control burns. I don't put words in your mouth because you, re you recognize like we all do that the yeah. forests forest need to be healthy and we've suppressed those burns for the natural fires for a long time. Well, is there a proposal or you know, we could spread this out more. Yeah, um, do that it different was the okay. takeaway. I asked this one hapless woman who raised her hand and said she was the final signer offer on these things. She said, yes. She said, I said, what have you learned? You know, I'm real, I'm real pragmatic with people when I meet with them. You know, what's the problem? What's your understanding of it? How can we do better? And walking away from this meeting, what have you learned? What mm -hmm. are you going to do for us? And she said, I... I think the biggest takeaway is that we need to space them out more. I mean, I'm just a jet <laughs> jockey. I figured that out. Uh, but, <laughs> Back in a napkin <laughs> stuff here, Wendy. I mean, it's like you common know. sense. Oh, man. But, you know, they said, oh, because COVID, you know, we got behind and we couldn't do them for a couple of years. And and then it and then we had this, the confluence of all these weather factors. And But then on the other hand, they'd say how much smarter they are than they were, you know, 15, 20 years ago, and they learned so much from the Cheddar Sky fire and the, and this fire and that fire, and Orville leaning over to me whispering, going, those weren't controlled birds. <laughs> those were, you know, those were natural disasters. I go, I know, I know. Oh, and then I, pa I passed him this note. He'd probably kill me for saying this. But <laughs> I passed him this note, and I said, what are they going to do for us? And I underlined do, and I passed him the note because I wanted him to say that because I'm already sort of pushy and obnoxious, but I wanted him <laughs> to say it. And, and so he, you know, he did. And uh, again, I just want the listeners to understand that there's no real place to kind of funnel your, your concerns because they were saying, oh, well, you know, we didn't receive that many complaints from all of you up here in Flagstaff. And then Lori goes, well, that's because no one knows where to complain. And they just come to us, you know? Yeah. And so that's why we're in this room. But yeah, that's, absolutely. that's what we got to do. Okay. That makes that makes sense. And I love the pushing obnoxious point because um, I think I have the same issue with, with myself as well. It's a blessing and a curse, right? <laughs> yeah. All right. Hang, hang tight. Uh, more with Senator Wendy Rogers. And if you got a comment, I love hearing from you. Talk with Jeff at iCloud.com. I have been buying physical gold and silver for decades. Angela and I have been doing that. And uh, look, I don't tell you how to invest. S seek out your financial advisor or um, do whatever it is you do. But I can tell you what I do, which is own a little bit of physical gold and silver, 
as an insurance policy. And I've been dealing with Desert Gold Exchange. Justin and his family-run company right here in Arizona can get you physical gold and silver shipped very quickly. They have the best pricing out there, and they guarantee that because they keep that overhead low. They pass those savings on to you. Desert Gold Exchange, 888-852-4343. That's Desert Gold Exchange at 888-852-4343. Back in. All right, welcome back. We're talking with Senator Wendy Rogers. We're just two pushy people trying to get some stuff done and try to return some common sense to our state and our country. And we're getting there. I see some optimistic signs, Senator, and uh, we just got to keep on pushing and more and more people. Yeah. Did you see that um, Hobbs is all for the border now and she's asking Biden for money and Gallego is all for ending the rampant crime. So, um, okay, it's election year, but hey, <laughs> progress wow. i guess all of a sudden they're in our they're in our camp I, and i say welcome home <laughs> welcome welcome well, to the problem we'll, we'll see yeah we'll right see, uh, what result <laughs> yeah that's what my wife angela she's with me the first hour and she was like yeah we'll see what happens it's an election year so all right let's let's talk about um well what's going on with the the, the elections obviously coming up um i i know that there was the issue of these supervisors down in southern arizona then um can't remember which county is being indicted uh cochise cochise yeah. okay uh, so cochise county wanted a hand count uh and it 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 they got indicted oh mm. wait what yeah the illegitimately installed christine chris mays attorney general of our state who quote unquote won by 200 votes or so uh, indicted two county supervisors for doing their job. Okay. The job of the county supervisors is to oversee the legitimacy of an election. And so they wanted to wait to certify the canvas back in 2022 of the election in Cochise County. And rightfully so, because there were anomalies that were not explainable. And so they uh, held off. And now the uh, attorney general of the state wants or did indict these two stalwart champions. You know, now take a step back here. I represent four different counties. And I was having a conversation uh, the other night. I was in the district in Gold Canyon uh, which is, of course, our LD7 district in the southern part in Pinal County. And I was talking to one of the Pinal County supervisors. And, of course, he understands that there were anomalies. And so what we have been trying to do, and I've talked about this before, Senator, my colleague, uh, also a rural senator from Lake Havasu, Sonny Borelli, and I, Wendy Rogers, have gone to three or four county boards of supervisors to encourage them to do a paper only uh, vote or ballot um, uh, election. Yeah. yeah, counting for the presidential preference primary, which is a, a one off election in March, not in August when we do our normal primary, but in March. And so uh, there has been all this pushback from the county. Mm. Why? Well, partly. It's because they're reticent to change any um, status quo, but also because they get threatened. And so what happened was there was a vote to do this, even more so to do it on a grander scale in Mojave County on a Monday morning. This was probably three weeks ago. They were going, I was at home in Flagstaff and I watched it happen. And uh, it was a vote on a Monday morning in Mojave County among the five county supervisors. Now, Sunday night, three of the five said they would vote to do paper hand count. Monday morning, one of them came. Why? And it was the chairman of the Board of Supervisors, incidentally. Why? Because he got a nasty letter from Attorney General Mays that said, you know, we will basically take you to task if you vote to do this. We're talking Absolute tyranny. We're talking arm twisting, uh, thuggish, uh, third world behavior. And so one of the three who said they were going to vote the right way and carry out their, their duties caved. And so this is what you have here right now, folks. It's very, very scary because you have a tyrant who's illegitimately in office 
uh, asserting control over county officials and making them afraid to do their job. And so how does the state legislature interface with that? Number one, it's my job to expose it. And number two, it's to come alongside these counties and get other counties. And this is what I was trying to do with this Pinal County supervisor the other night at this Christmas fighting uh, ceremony is to get these other counties to stand up and do the right thing. So Pinal County, uh, I think is going to have a vote to reconsider doing this. If we lose complete control of our elections, to these machines, which are completely corruptible and co-optable, uh, we're lost. Well, to, to those, Wendy, in power that are, t- their arms get twisted, just, okay, do it, and then let them let them bring the court case. You know, That's if, exactly right. Yeah, That's I, exactly right. It will go to court, and I told the Pinal County guy that. Yeah. I said, that you will be sued. So what? You yeah. can't not do your job. Yeah, for fear there's, of a lawsuit. There's too many people out there that are willing to buckle. Look, but on the encouraging side, I mean, I talked to a, a school board member from uh, Dewey Humboldt just last week, mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. she's out there cranking it, trying to get parental notification on a lot of issues and stuff. And so there are people, there is progress happening there, but to the kind of wimpy, um, wet noodle politicians who are always worried about, I don't know, what are you worried about, getting reelected or something? It's just like... It, it just sickens me as I know it sickens you as, as well, Wendy, but there's a lot of them out there. <laughs> well, and it's, and, and I know we all want to be liked and we yeah. all want to get along, but yeah. that, that ship has sailed. Yeah. We're losing our country. We're yeah. losing our state and look at what's happening on the border. All these military age males are uh, invading yeah. our, our uh, state. And you have, um, you have a brave sheriff down there, Sheriff Daniels, uh, down in uh, Cochise County, who's trying to to save off the flow, and it, it's I tell you, it's dispiriting. But we are at this every day. I am um, fighting, fighting, fighting. Okay, good. Hey, stick around just for a second, if you can, Senator. I just want to ask you a couple final questions because uh, mm-hmm. this is probably the last time we'll get to talk uh, this year before you get into session in 24. Uh, and I'd love to hear from you. Talk with Jeff at iCloud.com. Don't forget about my good friends out at Timberline Firearms and Training, not only bringing you um, training when it comes to firearms, gun safety, all the best courses out there. Great Christmas present, by the way. Also, though, Rob Wilson and Elise Wilson always fighting when it comes to, let's call it injustice. Justices. Let's cut this crazy issue in the city of Flagstaff over the First Amendment, uh, willing to stand up. So don't you want to support a great company like that? Timberline Firearms and Training, great Liberty safes as well, firearms, accessories, ammunition, plus their indoor shooting range. Check them out just five minutes north of the Flagstaff Mall. Okay, welcome back. Talking with uh, Senator Wendy Rogers, who represents a, a very large legislative district that spans four different counties she's down at the capitol getting ready for the session which will begin shortly after the new year which is rapidly closing in on us uh, senator rogers um real quick before this ends at the end of the year and i'll put this in the podcast notes uh, in, in a little bit Nonprofit security grant um i think that's uh, the, that's money for agencies that are like nonprofit. I mean, do you have a little bit on that Yes, actually, that's for houses of worship. Okay, and we okay. got a bill uh, appropriated this past session that enables a church, for example, to get $5,000 from the state of Arizona to uh, supplant its security apparatus. Now, I know our family uh, attends a church that, that has now stood up guys who are uh, armed and on little headsets uh, throughout the church service. Uh, guarding and protecting the congregation Hmm. and that requires training and that requires equipment equipment and equipping these these guys and so that's something that uh houses of worship are more and more aware of uh the necessity of and so the legislature passed uh an appropriation to give five thousand dollars to a church a house of worship for this the deadline to apply for these monies is this week. And this just came up at a family dinner last night. Our son asked me about it. He's in charge of it at his church. And he said, Hey mom, I saw this and 
uh, can you update me? Well, I asked at the meeting today and they said, yeah, the deadline's Friday. Oh, okay. <laughs> so I texted this out to uh, several Protestant Catholic churches, uh, Flagstaff down here in the Valley and, and wherever I could think. Um, and we talked about it in our meeting today. So this is money that's there, okay, for this purpose. And it's very important because uh, terrorists look for soft targets. And they will go and they will sit. And this, I just heard about this, and I think this is what was happening. Uh, this sort of wacky, offbeat person was sitting in on a church a meeting on a weeknight and uh, had a, I just heard about this from a constituent, had a knife up his uh, prosthesis uh, arm hmm. and uh, was pretty scary and walked out halfway through. Now, I was being told all this and flags went off in my mind. Okay, I'm thinking this person's A, mentally ill, B, um, casing out the soft targetness of the meeting and of the church and uh, C, um, you know, not accountable. No one knew who he was. No one could track him. And then that brought up this discussion about these monies for uh, security. So when in doubt, everyone, uh, at your church, you need to have a, a, a very serious discussion with your church leadership, you know, your, your, the elders and the pastor and so forth, to ensure that you have security going on. And you can apply for money for this up till Friday of this week with the state. And uh, that link is on Jeff's website. Yeah, I'll get that on talkwithjeff.com. Uh, is this, will this be a, happening again next year? Probably not. Okay. Uh, All right. I, no new monies will, I asked that question today too, just yeah. in general. No, no new monies will be awarded for new concepts. Okay. Okay. And is this just, um, does this apply to faith-based schools as well as just houses of worship? I think it's houses of worship. Okay. All right. I will, I will pass that along. It's a sad state of affairs uh, when we need to do this stuff, but you need to do this stuff because things have gotten crazy all over the place. And I mean, on that note, I mean, soft targets. I remember a few years back when people were putting the stickers in their window, this is a gun-free house. And I'm like, well, you're just advertising for trouble. Those have come down in most places. Uh, but there are schools in the state, not the public schools, but schools, uh, private schools, a uh, school we go to that is a Christian school, that they will allow people to carry firearms if they have to carry concealed course and sign up with the school and notify them. Um, and I, Absolutely. I, I think that's something that's, the public schools should look at, but <laughs> you know how that goes, right, Wendy? <laughs> good luck, well, with, right. good luck and, with that one. And last night, um, we as a family purchased insurance uh, through one of the legal, the Second Amendment uh, legal organizations uh, that protect you if you have to defend yourself. And, yeah. uh, you know, that's been long overdue. And our son said, uh, you know, it's, it's interesting when you get older, and you have adult children, how much they teach you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, even, so. The, even the younger ones. Yeah. And I've thought about that too. And I often have Rob Wilson from Timberline Firearms and Training. And right. I'm going to add that to my list because I think he's coming in this week. Um, because God forbid you have to use it to protect yourself and your family. You may be 100% in the right, but you also may be 100% in legal quagmire for multiple years. Yes, absolutely. So, so you want to protect yourself. Absolutely. All right. Senator Rogers, to, to wrap it up here, uh, going into the new year, when the session begins here in, in early January, what do you see coming in a, in a busy election year, in a, in a place where you guys have a one-seat majority, each the House and the Senate, uh, in a place where the governor is a Democrat and she's hoping to take away that majority and we'll work really hard for that and wrapped up with a presidential election, a big Senate election here in the state as well. I mean, what do you see coming if you're to look ahead to, to 24? What do you, what are you looking for? What are you shooting for? Just kind of lay it out there for us. Well, I'm endorsing Carrie Lake for the United States Senate. First of all, I've already endorsed Abe Hamaday for the United States house of representatives uh, from a district over on the West side of Phoenix, where he grew up as a little boy uh, both of them will be fantastic uh, America First champions at the federal level. At the state level, uh, you're right, every attempt will be made to hijack uh, the legislature. And my personal opinion is 
we don't need to meet in the middle. We need to stay strong uh, conservatively because people want uh, legislators who fight for them and who are unequivocal and unyielding. And that's who I am. And there are many of us like that in the Arizona Senate in particular. And my colleague, Senate President Warren Peterson, just told me that again the other night on the phone. He said, this is the most conservative Republican Senate uh, we've had in, in 10 years. And I think that that speaks volumes because we know what's at stake. We know what must be fought for. And there is uh, no yielding on that. And I think Arizonans appreciate that. On the election integrity front, uh, look for some repairs to the system that will ultimately have to be made. I will be leading that charge in January. Uh, you may see a special session atop the regular session uh, to work on a bill to fix the 2024 calendar uh, anomalies that uh, the counties are struggling with and have come to the state legislature to get help to repair. So we just uh, have have kind of gone through all that. And that's very detailed. That's another discussion. But I want to just summarize by saying, uh, even though we didn't get these uh, so-called election integrity bills, uh, quote unquote, passed uh, by the governor, there are still many moves afoot under the radar, if you will, that I'm working on to effect meaningful uh, reconstruction of integrity in our elections for 2024. So I am optimistic. All right, Senator. Hey, I, I, um, I, I wish you well in the new year coming up. Happy new year coming up. Um, I look forward to talking to you like we always do on a regular basis, giving everyone in the area updates once the legislative session kicks in. And I know that's really hard for you to do, but you always do it. Uh, there's a few of you out there that make a regular commitment to come on this show and inform people, a couple people in, in you know, the U.S. House and Congress and a couple people at the state legislature. And I really appreciate that. And um, so keep that up. And I, I really wish you a Merry Christmas and, you know, a really prosperous new year. Well, thank you. And I would encourage everyone to sign up at my website for updates, Wendy rogers.org wendy rogers.org put your first name last name email address and you will get cogent uh, pithy substantive updates from me probably about every five days or so where i give you the latest of what's going on and what i'm doing about it and i'd be honored to have you uh sign up for my updates at wendy rogers.org merry merry christmas right. everyone absolutely appreciate that we'll talk with you soon Thanks for watching this video. Thank you to uh, everyone listening on the podcast as well. Do me a favor right now. Please subscribe. I appreciate everybody that's doing it. Subscribe, 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 and share with your friends. If you've already done that, leave a comment. That helps us out a lot, and we'll see you back here real soon.